V1000 carbs on the table and the reason why I removed them is because I had slight problems with after revving the engine uh, RPM would kind of hang at 2000 RPM sometimes intermittently uh, so that's a typical uh, symptom of lean condition. I had a suspicion that it's the carb boots sorry the intake boots on the cylinder heads that are holding the carbs as well and look what happened here during this assembly one of them completely broke and, and I can also tell that the other one there's one more with some, with some light cracks on it, so uh, this was probably the reason why I was having those issues. But to replace them, carbs have to come off anyway, so I bought those new, uh, they're on their way and I'll be replacing them soon. Having the carbs out though, uh, it's always a good idea to have a little look at inspection, how clean they are, uh, and uh, let's do it now. I'm going to start with those two uh, float bowls. I will take out the jets and the floats and um, the float valve and the float seat and we'll inspect everything. Um, and we'll also measure uh, the float height. And I have a good important tip, when you're working on Japanese carburetors, make sure you're using the right screwdrivers. Those screws are very easy to strip, so always use JIS screwdrivers. All right, so the first one comes out, and as you can see, can you? Hope you can. It's pretty damn clean there. Now to remove the float, what you'll need to do is you'll need to grab this little pin here and you need to pull it out this way. So I'm just going to use a screwdriver, push it a bit, and as you can see, just here the pin comes out. I shall magnify it for you so you see what I'm doing. So you see the pin here? coming out nicely okay now we can lift the float and of course you've got to be delicate so here's the float it's all plastic and here we've got the float valve so let's remove the float valve and there's a couple of things we need to check here first of all is the tip we need to make sure that the plastic tip, or rubber tip in fact, the black tip at the top, doesn't have any signs of wear. So normally when it's worn out there's a ring around it. And that one seems to look pretty damn good actually. Now when it comes to inspection of the float, just make sure there is no cracks or missing pieces of the float body. And that one seems to be good as well. Right, so here we have it. You're gonna see there's three jets here, one, two, and three. This one here is the choke jet, so the starter jet. This one here is your pilot jet. And this one here is your main jet. So let's remove the jets and let's see how they are. And by the way, for doing that, make sure you've got the right screwdriver because they're brass, they're made of brass and they're very brittle, easy to break them. Right, so main jet comes out first. So that is the main jet, and I can tell you this is a 115 size, 115. So making sure the jet is clean, and as you can see, you can actually see light through it. Now we're moving the pilot jet. Uh, those will sit there very, very tight, so make sure you've got a good screwdriver. And. Okay. That comes off. So the pilot jets in this bike are size 38. You might be able to see it says it actually on the side of the jet. And once again, what you want to make sure is that you can see light through the jet and uh, I don't know if the camera shows it but I absolutely can I can actually blow air through it and all those holes and all those holes are free uh, there's no gunk or anything in the very clean pilot jet okay now to remove this uh, float valve seat you're gonna need um, a 10 millimeter socket
seems to me that mine is very very clean inside and it's gonna also have this small little mesh filter which by the way is removable and just make sure that filter is clean and free of residue so as you can see that's pretty damn clean there another thing to mention just in here there's gonna be a a small thin washer underneath it so make sure that is either replaced or at least goes back on its place so I will now remove the jet holder that's a main jet holder and for that you're gonna need a seven millimeter socket So that's a main jet holder and same principle just make sure it's clean you can see through it and make sure all those holes are not blocked all right so I've got a presumption all of those carbons will look just the same and I will double check them in a minute myself obviously no re no reason to film it because it's all the same but what I'll do before I end this video is we'll remove another float bowl and, and we'll check the float height on this carburetor because it's actually quite tricky to set it correctly so let's go ahead and do it now okay so as you can see the float is now exposed <clears throat> and to measure the float height we need to have carburetors at an angle the mistake people make is that they put the, those carbs like flat like this and they start measuring that's not the position the carbs need to be in to measure it properly so let's just set them up the way they should be so as you can see those carbs are set at an angle and the angle I'm talking about is the angle between the surface so this is the surface and this area where the gasket meets with the carb body so you want so you want that surface and that surface and the angle between them between say 30 and 45 degrees. Okay, so I'm gonna measure this with the caliper and as you can see, I've set it up for exactly seven and a half millimeters and I'm measuring the float height from this surface here and look what's gonna happen see how this float goes down and I'm squeezing it because the actual height is a lot more than seven and a half millimeters this is seven and a half and we've got probably nine or nine and a half here and same on the other side so that float height needs to be readjusted Okay, so I will now quickly remove this float. Same as, as before. So the pin comes out. And I can grab the float and get it out. Okay, I'm gonna remove float valve. And here we'll have this small tang. That metal bit here is what adjusts the float height. So to reduce the float height, I'm gonna have to push this tank a bit that way. Okay, so I've got it slightly, very slightly bent. In fact, I actually got it straight because it was <coughs> bent the other way. So now the float valve comes back. I've got the pin ready. Let's reinstall this. Okay, it's back in. And let's have a look what's the height now. All right, so once again, that's seven and a half millimeters. Let's see what we've got. See this? 
it's pretty much spot on. So let's just move this float two times to settle it. Spot on here and spot on here. It's literally seven and a half millimeters. So I've got it all very much magnified here. And have a look at this. So this is our float. Inside there, there's gonna be this metal tang that I was bending. And also, just here, you can see there's that pin that actually goes inside the float valve. And that pin has a spring inside. And that is like a little shock absorber inside this float valve. So the angle that you want is the angle in which the metal tang is just touching that pin in a float valve. That's the correct angle and that's your 45 degrees, which is between this and the surface. If you invert your carbs upside down where the float is pushing on that pin, you see how this pin now goes inside? That will be a false reading because you're not actually checking the float height at the correct angle. It's got to be, carbs have to be at an angle where the tongue is just touching the pin. If the float is starting to push that pin inside, you are at a wrong angle. So if I now inverted this carb upside down, the weight of the float would probably start to slightly push this pin inside the valve and that is a wrong angle. So just make sure you're at an angle where the tang is just slightly touching on this pin. All right, peeps, so I've done all four floats. They're all seven and a half millimeters. Two of them needed adjustment. Um, those carbs are clean as baby's butt. Uh, I've removed all the jets. Uh, I've inspected the float valves and floats themselves. And I've got to say, somebody must have been there before because they're so clean. So just before I invert them for inspection of um, the diaphragm chambers, I uh, just wanted to show you a couple of things. So to synchronize those carbs, you're going to be using three, well, actually four screws. One, two, three, and believe it or not, number four. So everybody thinks this is the idle adjuster, which it is, but also that plays a role in synchronizing those carbs. So one, two, three, and four. Those are your uh, synchronizing screws. Now, also, if you wanted to check what's the setting of your mixture screws, you've got to remember not to confuse them with float bowl draining screws. So that screw here, let me just get it off for a moment, is a screw that you take out to drain the fuel from the float bowl. And that's what it looks like, okay? Each carburetor will have one. But then when you wanted to adjust, but then if you wanted to adjust air fuel mixture using the mixture screws, they're actually hidden here. So, can you see this here inside? That's your actual mixture screw. So the base setting for the V1000, according to service manual, is two and a half turns out. And that's just the very base setting. In my bike, this is actually three and a quarter turns out. All right, so just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna take one of the diver caps off. So here we have it. You're gonna have spring there. Here's your diaphragm, and what you're doing is you just need to inspect if the diaphragm is in one piece. If there's any tears or holes, the diaphragm needs to be replaced. And the bummer is, those are expensive. But in this case, it's all good, no problem there. Okay, so I will now remove the diaphragm with the slide assembly. Just inspect the needle, if it's not worn out too much. But this all looks very good. It's all super clean inside. There's basically no problem with it whatsoever. So that is it folks. Quick inspection of those carbs. As you can see, they're very, very clean. Float height set up correctly to seven and a half millimeters. And all I have to do now is put them back in and simply synchronize them. Thanks for watching. Till next time.